Thank you for joining us for this, for this webinar today, Chris, and I'll let you take it away from here. Thanks, Tara. I appreciate it. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Uh, I think you are going to find this fascinating. Uh, everything, I mean, I'm talking about animal skulls, but really that's a foil. I'm talking about evolution and I'm talking about dietary preference. Everything that I'm going to talk about is driven by dietary preference. Okay. In middle school, you used to learn about carnivores, omnivores, and herbivores. Those are not scientific terms. I'm well aware of that. But believe it or not, they are powerful when it comes to identification. So I have 15 skulls here. Several are carnivores, pure predators. Several are omnivores. They, they eat meat, but usually mostly herbaceous materials. And the rest are pure herbivores. So we're dealing with carnivores, omnivores, herbivores. Uh, carnivores and omnivores are predators. They will have canines to kill. Herbivores have no canines, except in rare circumstances like uh, the pig has tusks. Okay, so let's take, uh, let's, uh, let's step back for a second. What if you're in the woods and you find a skull? Chances are it's a, it's a mammal skull. Uh, bird skulls are too small and fragile, they'll break up. Uh, amphibian skulls, they're located by water, they're often skull, off, uh, also small and uh, break up. Reptile skulls also have problems. So most skulls you find in the woods are going to be mammal skulls. Okay, but there's something that you can do to look at the skull to get an idea of what it is. So I'm going to take, I'm going to take, this is a uh, long-nosed, long-nosed, uh, 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 canine. It's a gray wolf. All right. And look at the, the rear here. You see that hole? That hole is called the foramen magnum. That's where the vertical column goes into. All right. So all mammals have a, uh, a foramen magnum with uh, uh, called the great hole, the big hole, uh, where the vertical column goes in. But also, there's two little knobs, one here and one here on either side, two knobs. That means it must be either a mammal or an amphibian. Well, this is too large to be an amphibian. So you know you have a mammal. It has two occipital condyles. Now, reptile will have one located at the, at the top. A bird will have one located at the top. That's easy to remember. Birds evolved from dinosaurs, so they both have one occipital condyle. Okay, fish have no occipital condyles, so they can't move their head. Okay, now, another thing that's important about the foramen magnum is it tells you something, it tells you something about locomotion. If it's the foramen magnum's all the way back here, you have a quadruped, obviously. It's a quadruped. If the foramen magnum is at the very bottom, such as with a human skull, uh, or a, uh, well, such as with a human skull or a bird, you have a biped. If the, if the uh, foramen magnum is, is in between the two, not all the way back, not the bottom, but in between, uh, as in an, a chimp, then you have an animal that's partially biped. Okay, so that tells you a little bit about the foramen magnum and the occipital condyles and whether it's a mammal or amphibian or a reptile or a, uh, uh, a reptile or a bird. Okay, uh, now there are three uh, uh, driving things that I, I want you to walk away with. When you look at a skull, you want to look at the location of the eyes. You want to look at uh, the, uh, the uh, structure of the teeth, and you want to look at uh, the, the things relating to the musculature. We'll get, we'll talk more about musculature. That's extremely important. So let's start with the eyes. Okay, if you're a predator, such as a, a wolf, a coyote, uh, a bobcat, a mountain lion, your eyes are forward-facing. 
That way you have binocular vision, you can see this, an object and both eyes can see it and triangulate and know exactly how far away it is from you. You need to have that so that you can pounce on the animal at the, the exact spot. So uh, all, herb all carnivores, all omnivores have forward facing eyes. Notice the eye socket that's here, the orbit here. It, it looks a little bit on the side, but it's forward facing. It's forward facing. If you compare it to say uh, a deer, a deer, all right, its eye socket is definitely laterally facing. Uh, a deer uh, can, cannot see the same object with both eyes, it, but it has a very wide field of view on both sides, almost uh, 360. It needs that to look out for predators uh, and to see somebody out there. It doesn't need to know exactly where the predator is, just that it's out there so it can walk away. But predators like cougars, and this is a gray wolf again, they need to uh, see exactly where their prey is located. So that's the eyes. Another aspect to eyes is if the eye uh, is particularly big, then uh, it too is a predator. And an example of that would be a bird such as an owl where the eyes are huge compared to the size of the skull. I don't have a skull with me of an owl, but the, uh, the, the eyes would be particularly large. Okay, so that covers the first issue is which way do the eyes face, forward facing or laterally facing? Okay, second is the structure of the teeth, all right? The teeth, by the way, every skull has a cranium, the top half, and a, a lower mandible, the bottom half. Every skull is structured that way, okay? Now, in structure of the teeth, there's top teeth and there's bottom teeth. This is the gray wolf again, okay? When you, and the teeth, uh, in general, the teeth will have incisors first, then canines, then uh, molars, and the molars are divided into premolars and then molars. And okay, so what's the difference between molars and premolars? I, I couldn't find that, this in a book at all. Never found it, couldn't find it on the internet. So finally I asked my dentist and he told me, premolars are teeth that are deciduous. They come in, fall out, and then come in again and are, and are permanent. Molars are permanent from day one. So in, a, in, a, uh, uh, in, in looking at an animal's teeth, uh, in fact, every animal has what's called a dental formula. And so uh, if you look at the dental formula, it will note premolars and molars and differentiate, even though if you look at an animal, you can't tell them apart. You can't tell them apart. They look the same. Okay, so with a uh, mountain lion, or let's look at a mountain lion. That's, that's, the cats are really carnivorous. All right, okay, it only has about 30 teeth, I think. Uh, uh, first of all, they're impressive canines, impressive canines, and in between are small incisors that uh, uh, can nip and tear at some stuff, but don't have a lot of function. Uh, and then the molars, the molars in a, uh, uh, a heavily carnivorous animal are heavily jagged. All of them are jagged in, in the cat family, all right? I mentioned about a dental formula. The dental formula uh, would be for this animal, you, you count the number of incisors on the right side and you put that number, you put I for incisor, then the number on the right and the number on the bottom. And then you put C for canines, one top slash one on the bottom. Then you put premolars, then the number of premolars slash the number on the bottom and then, and then molars and the number slash number. That half, is identical with the left half. So you don't bother to repeat themselves. You just cover a half, both top and bottom. And every animal has a dental formula. By the way, a possum uh, has 50 teeth, more teeth than any other mammal in North America. And when it bars its teeth, it's extremely impressive. Although its major strategy is feigning death, playing possum. Okay, so uh, we covered the, in the teeth, in a really carnivorous animal, you're going to get heavy, heavily jagged molars. You're going to get canines. The incisors are not going to be impressive, uh, but it's uh, uh, okay. Then the other thing you're going to get, all right, which 
It's difficult for you to see. It's really difficult for you to see, but there's right, right, right here. You see right here? I'm gonna turn apart. They come together, they come together, they come together, they come together like they shear. It's called the shearing tooth, all right? All carnivores have a shearing tooth. It's a carnassial tooth. That's the technical name. It's all, but it's called the shearing tooth. It's used for shearing meat. Have you ever seen a dog and give him a big, a big chunk of meat? And he goes off and he starts throwing his head around left and right. He's trying to move the meat to the carnassial tooth so he can start cutting slices into it. That's, that's what he's doing. So every carnivore will have a carnassial tooth. Uh, okay. Uh, so, uh, jagged molars. Now, let's look at the uh, teeth of the gray wolf. All right. Now, the gray wolf has some jagged teeth, but mostly flat molars at the back. Uh, and there will be a carnassial tooth there. There is a carnassial tooth. Do I have the right one? Let me make sure. This is the dog, isn't it? That's the dog. Okay, I got it. Nope, I got the wrong skull in that one. Here's the gray wolf. Here's the gray wolf. I'm sorry, I knew I had the wrong one. Here it is. Look at those impressive carnassial tooth. Look at that impressive carnassial tooth there. You see those shearing tooth, and 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 all the teeth are pretty are pretty much jagged. There's no flat molars. There's no flat molars, long canines, uh, small incisors, small incisors. I'm sorry, I put up, I grabbed the, uh, uh, I grabbed, let's now look at an omnivore, a black bear, all right? Now, a black bear, a million years ago, its diet was 100% meat. It had a carnassial tooth. It had jagged molars. It, ha it, it, has, it had impressive canines. It still has impressive canines, but its diet has changed. It's now about 20% meat and 80% roots and nuts and, and berries and think honey and things like that. And so what? It lost its carnassial tooth. Doesn't need it. It's a waste of time. It's a waste of energy. And so it lost it. It no longer has a carnassial tooth. In addition, all its back molars are flat. But is it a herbivore? Look at those canines. Impressive canines. You know it's uh, either a carnivore or an omnivore, but no carnassial tooth and no jagged molars. You have an omnivore. You have to have an omnivore. Eyes are facing forward, just like with the, with the cougars. Uh, so it's a predator. Now, let's look at the teeth of the white-tailed deer. The teeth are all flat. They're all flat. There's, there's uh, no canines. In fact, there's incisors on the bottom. They lost the incisors on top. Instead, they have a hard palate. But most herbivores have incisors top and bottom for ripping off and tearing uh, shreds of leaves and things. Notice the big dis distance between the first molar and the incisors. This is called the diastema. This is another clue you have a herbivore. This used to be where the canines were, but they evolved out. They lost them. Okay, over, you know, but, it, but when I say lost them, we're, the, you know, mammals appeared on the scene, the, were the last vertebrate class to appear in the scene. By the way, I have a, uh, I created it last night uh, quickly, but it's wonderful. A, uh, a brief history of Earth. And so mammals appeared at 200 million years ago, well after most of the other species. I also included that brief history, all the major extinction events. If you want it, just uh, tell uh, Tara and I'll send it to you. Uh, and also I have a summary of this, uh, this deal. I can send it to, to you too. Just tell Tara. Because uh, I will not cover everything in my uh, write-up. Okay, so we cover the teeth. We cover the eyes. The eyes here, the white-tailed deer, right here, totally lateral facing. 
it's it's monocular vision, not binocular vision, monocular. It wants a wide field of view. It doesn't care to know exactly where the predator is located. It just needs to know that something's out there so it can move away. Okay, now the third issue, which is the most interesting and to some a little bit complex, is the musculature. Let's talk about the gray wolf. There are three muscle groups in a skull. There are digastic muscles, which control opening and closing the mouth, and they are useless for identification. So we're gonna ignore them. But the other two are quite useful. Okay, there are temporalis or jaw closing muscles, and there are masseter or jaw grinding muscles. Well, you can't, evolution will not let you usually have great jaw closing muscles and great jaw grinding muscles. It forces you to choose. So carnivores and omnivores have strong jaw closing muscles. They have canines, they need to kill. Herbivores have weak jaw closing muscles, but incredibly strong jaw grinding muscles. They need to grind herbaceous materials. Okay, so where are the muscles? The temporalis muscles attach up here and then go down. And they go down in between this thing called, the, they go in between this cheekbone. The, the technical term is zygomatic arch. They go in between them down to the bottom. Those are the temporalis or jaw closing muscles. All right. Okay. The other muscle group are masseter or jaw grinding muscles. They attach to here to the uh, cheekbone or zygomatic arch and they go down. All right. That gives you a little flavor. I'll come back and remind you on that. You, don't worry about it. I'll remind you. Okay, so in uh, in okay, the temporal evolution is so smart. It is so smart. The structure of the million jaw, with its masseter and zyg and, and temporalis muscles, is a classic third class lever. It's classic. A tongs. In tongs, you grab the middle, that's the effort. The, the load is at the end and the fulcrum's at the other end. That's just like the jaw. It's the same thing. Okay, so, but there's two big differences. If you look at the lower jaw, this is the great, this is the, the uh, gray, gray, uh, uh, gray wolf. If you look at the back, of the lower mandible, all right? This thing here is called, this thing here, oh, I, I, I'll get the wrong side. <laughs> it's called the jaw hinge, right in the middle. Or it's also called the condyle, but it's the jaw hinge, all right? If the jaw hinge is level with the tooth row, such as in this example, where it's level, then, the, the, the lever works to put a lot of power into the temporalis muscles. So all carnivores and all omnivores have jaw hinges that are level with the tooth row, all of them. But let's look at the white-tailed deer. Look where the jaw hinges. It's elevated significantly. Well, the mechanics of the musculature work out such that this significantly enhances the masseter muscles, the jaw grinding muscles, and the jaw grinding, jaw uh, closing muscles are weak. Well, that's what the animal wants, strong jaw grinding muscles. So all herbivores have condyles that are not level with the tooth row, they're significantly elevated. In fact, sometimes with the rabbit, they're so high that you can't really tell where it is. You can't figure out where it is. 
Okay, well, there's other aspects to musculature that are also besides the condyle. The condyle is fantastic because often you find a lower mandible and you can just look at it, you know, right away, whether there's a predator or a prey animal, you know, right away, it's a dead giveaway. So uh, other aspects, I mentioned that with the gray wolf, right? The temporalis muscles attached here, right? Well, notice this thing above it. It's called a sagittal crest. Many carnivores and some omnivores, i.e. the opossum, have developed powerful sagittal crests. Why? Because the temporalis muscles reach up, go over it, and grab onto it for enhanced strength. It strengthens the jaw closing muscles, the temporalis muscles. So a sagittal crest is another clue that you're dealing with a pure carnivore. Uh, a possum would be an exception. It's an omnivore, but it has a distinctive sagittal crest. All right, okay. Now, I also said that the temporalis muscles went down through the orbits here, through the zygomatic arch. Well, if you have a lot of jaw closing muscles, wouldn't you think that the zygomatic arch should be wide spreading? It has to be wide spreading to let in all those uh, temporalis muscles, jaw closing muscles. That's exactly it. Look how, look how wide spreading those zygomatic arches are. Now compare it to uh, uh, the zygomatic arches, which is right here, of the, of the deer, of the white-tailed deer. It's extremely uh, narrow. That's because it doesn't have very many jaw closing muscles. So evolution says, why am I gonna waste time creating a very wide zygomatic arch? Makes no sense. Evolution is just so smart. Okay, so now some other aspects to musculature. All right. When I, when I, here's, we're back with the gray wolf. And when I close this, I, I, lock, I lock it in and I close it. It's pretty tight. It, it, it snaps in. In fact, if I had a, uh, what's the animal? Oh, I forget the animal. I can't forget the animal. But one animal is so tight that I can't, I can't pull it apart. It's so tight. And, and there's no muscles. It's just the bones. Well, that's called articulation. Well, when, the, when you have a carnivore or an omnivore, the articulation is tight. When you have a rabbit, the articulation is, is so loose that if I pull them apart, I have trouble figuring out how to get them back together. It's so loose. It's so loose because the, they don't put stre uh, uh, emphasis on the jaw closing muscles. You can't do both. They put emphasis on the jaw grinding muscles. Okay. So another aspect to musculature. When I close this for the, for the I can't pull it apart now. When I close it for the, the rabbit, Eastern cottontail rabbit, they all close at once. It's called simultaneous articulation. But if I take a mountain lion, it's sequential. It's sequential articulation. Another clue, it's a small clue. I mean, there's so many other clues that are more obvious, but still, it's another clue that sequential articulation, you're dealing with a carnivore or an omnivore, simultaneous uh, simultaneous articulation, you're dealing with a herbivore. Okay. Okay, we're doing okay. Now, so we talked sexual crest, we talked articulation, we talked uh, 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 teeth, we talked eyes, we talked the uh, condyle on the back of the lower mandible. Condyle is so important because it's such an obvious clue. If it's elevated, you got a herbivore. If it's level with the tooth row, it's either a carnivore or a herbivore. Okay, so let's look at some uh, interesting uh,
Okay. By the way, I talked about dental formula uh, uh, for I number slash number, C number slash number, P number slash number, uh, M number slash number. Uh, uh, so I have written in there, if you want the dental formulas, I have the dental formula for every one of my skulls. Um, uh, and by the way, for all the red wolf, the gray wolf, the Siberian wolf, the dog, <laughs> the fox, the two foxes, the dental formula is all the same because they're so similar. They're quite different than the cougar and the mountain lion and the uh, bobcat, totally different. But for the canines, they're all the same. So that could be another clue. If you're really sophisticated, you start looking at the teeth. You can't tell uh, premolars and molars apart. Nobody can. But you could sort of say P, M, and then the number, and you can count the number of teeth you got. And then based upon that and the total number of teeth, that can be another clue in terms of what type of skull you're dealing with. You know, a canines, I think, have 42 teeth total, uh, 21 in each side. And uh, mount the, uh, coo the cats have, I think, 30 teeth. I could don't hold me to that, but I can't remember exactly. I don't memorize the dental formula for all, the, all my skulls. But let's look at these two. These are two canines. These are two skulls, uh, foxes, all right? They're quite similar, all right? They're quite similar. But do you see something? That, by the way, the fox is a, uh, has a wonderful story. We only had gray foxes over here many, many years ago. Europe only had red foxes. Well, hunters hated gray foxes. That's because they were such good artists at climbing trees. And they'd just run up them. And they ruined it for the hunters. So the hunters imported red foxes. And now we have more red foxes over here than we have gray foxes. <laughs> okay, so this is on my, this one is a red fox. This one is a gray fox. How do I know? This little ridge here, see this little ridge here? It sticks out. It's called a temporal ridge. And it's used for muscles to grab onto. And here is V-shaped. It's V-shaped. That means red fox. In fact, V is ha happens to stand for Vulpes Vulpes, which is the scientific name of the red fox. Well, notice the shape of this one. It's U-shaped. I can't even pronounce it scientific names. You're a something or something something. But the, the gray fox is U-shaped. The red fox is V-shaped uh, temporal ridges. Okay, so when if you have you think you have foxes, by the way, the, again the dental form formula is the same as all canines. No difference. Okay, let look now. Another interesting one. Here, this is a small skull. All right. No, look, look at the skull. I mean, it's it's di it's it's diagnostic. Look how rounded that is. By the way, the cats are very rounded. The canines are very long, but the cats aren't like this. First of all, uh, this has this has canines, uh, 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 but it's extremely rounded. It's extremely rounded. It's got wide zygomatic arches. It's, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a uh, omnivore. If you look at the teeth, it's an omnivore. Uh, it has no uh, uh, carnassial tooth or shearing tooth. So it's an omnivore if it had a carnassial tooth. Oh, by the way, if you go into the, uh, Wikipedia and you look into carn carnivora, they'll put, I think, black bears in, par in carnivora. Uh, they'll do some weird things. Well, uh, a, 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 a American black bear is not a carnivore. <laughs> it's an omnivore. <laughs> okay, so this is, a, uh, this is a northern raccoon. The diagnostic part is the very round, very rounded, very rounded uh, head, very rounded skull, cranium, called a cranium. It's, the, it's extreme, it's diagnostic. But, and it has canines, obviously, it's, it's a uh, omnivore, does not have carnassial tooth. It's small, it's a small skull. You, you, you can tell a little bit by telling it, it's only about six inches long, but it's so rounded. While, look at this one which is the opposite. Look how small a brain case it has. By the way, the raccoon has a big uh, brain case. And guess what? It's smart. 
this one is kind of dumb. <laughs> this is an opossum. <laughs> look how small the brain case it has. Also diagnostic. Look at the up here, up here, the sagittal crest. Look at the sagittal crest up there at the top. Again, muscle, temporalis muscles come over and grab onto it for enhanced power. It's a, a omnivore. It has no uh, uh, shearing tooth. It has canines, all the other teeth that normal has. It's just, it's diagnostic when you see this. It has such a tiny brain case and a distinctive uh, sagittal crest. You know you got an opossum. Opossums are fantastic. I told you, they are pre prehensile tails. Uh, the only marsupial in net, or, or, or pouch cannibal in, in uh, uh, North America, uh, 50 teeth more than any other mammal. Uh, 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 it's it's uh, it's it's uh, uh, it's it's uh, hands uh, cl uh, close on each other, opposable thumb. Uh, I told you, prehensile tail. It can't get rabies. Can't give you rabies. A uh, raccoons can, but not opossums. Okay, so let's look at something on the deer. I mean, usually the uh, prominent antlers are a dead giveaway, but uh, the, uh, we know the laterally shaping uh, uh, eyes, the flat teeth with no canines, the long nose, uh, no uh, incisors on the top, incisors on the bottom. You got a uh, deer skull. It may not be a white-tailed deer, but at least you bring it down to the deer level. Uh, okay. Now, another thing that's interesting is look at right here. It looks like chicken wire. It's a small area up here of chicken wire. It's called the fenestra. Okay, believe it or not, we don't know what the, the, the purpose of it is. Of course, we can't talk to a deer. Uh, so, we have, so they have an idea that maybe it has something to do with cooling the blood, but who knows? Uh, so anyway, that's a small fenestra, which all is diagnostic. It's, it's diagnostic to a deer. I only know two species. Well, I only, of my skulls, I only know two species that have a fenestra: a uh, the, the white-tailed deer, and this tiny skull is an eastern cottontail rabbit, and it has. Let me see it. All all up here. It's hard to see. All up here. Is a fenestra. All this is a fenestra. All this is the fenestra. It's huge. I had my teacher, who got me started in this, send me a skull to help him identify. I looked at it right away. I knew it was a, it was a rabbit because of the uh, fenestra. But the front incisors had been chewed off. That's why he was having trouble identifying it. So I went back laughing to him. I said, Austin, you got an Eastern cottontail rabbit. It's just the, the incisors have been chewed off by somebody. <laughs> but the, the uh, fenestra is diagnostic, especially, I, I don't know any species except maybe another rabbit, a jackrabbit. By the way, a, 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 a deer is an ungulate. A rabbit is a ligomorph. And a, my next one is a rodent. Okay, so uh, eyes face sideways, obviously. It's a herbivore. It's got no canines. It's got uh, impressive incisors. Another thing that's uh, diagnostic about the rabbit, about all lagomorphs, all right? How do you tell a, a, a rodent from a lagomorph? Okay, there's uh, first of all, you have the finestra here. That's one, one obvious clue. Secondly, the teeth are white. All rodents have orange teeth, okay? Secondly, rodents have two top incisors and two bottom incisors, two top and two bottom. Lagomorphs have a reduced pair of top incisors behind the two top incisors. So there's four top incisors and two bottom incisors. So the number of teeth differs, the color, the color of the uh, teeth differs, and the uh, finestra, finestra differs. Let's look at a Let's look at a, this is our beaver, all right? Impressive. Now, the beaver's a little different. It has, not only does it have to have good jaw grinding muscles because it's a uh, herbivore, it eats herbaceous material, but it needs good jaw grind, uh, jaw closing muscles because it chops down trees. And so it has a combination. It's a little bit, it's a little bit of an anomaly. And so 
it's it's a uh, it's a uh, condyle in the back. It's elevated, but not. It's sort of halfway. It's not totally elevated. It's right here. It's right here, and so it's elevated from the tooth row, but not that much. Not that much. All right. Here's the orange teeth. All rodents have orange teeth. No exceptions. All right. There's only two top teeth. All right. The the lagomorph has two front and two reduced teeth behind it, uh, and it has no finestra on the side. It's 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 purely smooth. So that's how you tell the difference between a rodent and a lagomorph. By the way, la rodents, forty percent of all mammals are rodents. It's extremely successful. It's, it's extremely successful. That compares to, in the insect kingdom, kingdom 40% of all insects are beetles. Also extremely impressive, but even more impressive in birds, 60% in one order of 29 orders. In one order, 60% our passerines. Okay. So let me see if I have any hearing. We haven't talked too much about hearing. We actually do have a question, Chris. Okay, like go ahead. That. So the question is, let me just pull it up. Um, one second. Okay, so the question is, would an herbivore ever eat meat if they are if they are hungry enough? And if not, is that because they can't bite through the meat? Um, I I don't think they'll ever meet, eat meat, period. Never. And I don't think it's a function that they can't eat it. Uh, I, I mean, it's a function of their digestive system is not structured to, 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 to digest it. I mean, they're not used to eating it. I mean, I think they'll just starve before they eat meat. Thanks. That was a good question. Um, I mean, and we I, just have five minutes left. So um, mm -hmm. anything that Any you Any more really questions? Can... Yes. Um, Hal Brindley has a question and I am just going to allow him to talk. So you can actually ask your question out loud. Here, Hal, if you'd like to speak. You will just have to un un Wait, Ernie has asked me, why don't we find more skulls probably in the wild? Because they're so fragile. And small. And, and the, the big skulls, the ungulates, they're not there. <laughs> you know, cattle, horses. <laughs> True. They're too fragile. They're too skull. They're too, uh, they're too, they're, they're too, uh, they're too fragile. They're too small. Thanks. And we have a question from Hal, if you'd like to chime in there, Hal. Go ahead. You can, you can speak out loud if you'd like. Oh, sure. I just typed it in as well. But so. Uh... I can't hear will occasionally eat meat in my yard. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Did you hear that? No, I didn't hear it. Oh, well, I'm sorry, I guess. Well, maybe we should just stick with the typing then if my microphone isn't doing well. I can hear you now, I can hear you now. Yep, go for it. Okay, um, yeah, so the other day I noticed my chipmunk in my yard was eating a snake. And so I started researching rodents that occasionally eat meat and I'm wondering if that's reflected in their dentition, that rodents like chipmunks or squirrels that occasionally do eat meat. Well, I've never heard of it. Uh, a chipmunk's a pure, a chipmunk is a pure carnivore, I mean, a pure uh, herbivore. And that's what I thought until I started researching it. Now, maybe I'm wrong about it. If they're, if they're desperate for food, they'll eat meat, but I, I've never heard of that before. I hadn't either, so I was kind of shocked by it. But that's what I've learned. So I guess there isn't anything unusual about their dentition that would suggest they have any meat-eating proclivity. No, it's the opposite. It's, that's it's, what I it's, thought. It's, it's, they have no, uh, the dentition is such that they have zero meat-eating proclivities. Their dentition is totally for herba herbaceous materials. They, okay. they don't have a slicing tooth. Carnassial tooth, like the like the uh, uh, carnivores, they don't have jagged molars, uh, like the carn. They don't have canines to kill. Yeah, so it's pretty weird, huh? Yeah, it sounds weird. <laughs> you need to get but that on it's video. Just weird, you know. <laughs> I do have it on video, actually. Can you send that trap. over to? 
to to us afterwards if you don't mind sure okay that'd be really cool to see i will definitely make sure we get that over to chris the snake was dead right yes the snake was dead so i don't know who killed the snake i don't know for a fact that a chipmunk killed it yeah i know know. i'm sure i'm sure the chipmunk did not kill it i'll bet you a lot of money on that yeah that seems likely but I think it might have died on natural causes. I mean, if a bird killed it, the bird's gonna eat it. I believe a bird probably did kill it because I found it on top of a log. Uh-huh. So anyway, that was my question. I'll let okay. you get on with it so you can wrap it up. Thanks, thanks, Hal. That was a good question. Thanks and for the we question. Do have, we do have um, in the question and answer, eight-year-old Kirk would like to see a dog skull. So maybe if you just wanted to show one of the canine skulls. Okay. This is a gray wolf, right? This is a dog. They have the same, they have the same uh, dental formula. They have the same musculature. Now this is not, I mean, that's a dog. Now, one thing about the dogs, we have about 110 different breeds of dogs. Notice I said breed, not species. There's only one species of dog, it's called dog. But man has, man, and the original dog was very close to a wolf. It just got close to people and liked people and stuck around and it became a dog. I mean, that's how it evolved to be, how dogs evolved, we think. Uh, so, but then man became, it wanted to tinker around with uh, dogs for its own fun. And so from one breed, we ended up with 110. But the, the dental formula is all the same. The musculature is the same. They just, I mean, they just, I mean, we, they just look different because man's fooled around with them. Thanks for, for sharing that. Um, and if you just want to take two minutes to kind of sum up here and then we can see if we have any more questions. This has been phenomenal, Chris. Thank you. The key is, remember, remember, which way do the eyes face, all right? Look at the dentition, canines, incisors, jagged molars, flat molars. Look at the, uh, the issues regarding the musculature, the condyle in the back, all right, the zygomatic arches, are they wide spreading? The carnivore, are they narrow spreading? It's herbivore. So those were the big issues. That's great, Chris. Thank you so much. Um, and we just have some people saying, great job, Chris, in the, the chat. Oh, great. I have a write-up. Tell Tara if you want it, I'll send it to you. And I have a write-up I did last night on the history of Earth, which is kind of cute, which is an interesting. It tells you when mammals arrived, when birds arrived, when reptiles arrived, when amphibians arrived. So it's kind of interesting. It's it's wonderful. Um, you've written so many really, really Thank cool you. things. Thank you. Thanks, Tara. Very kind. Yeah, no, I, I'm sure our guests here would love to read read a bunch of those. So we may have to share a few of those with them. I'm, I'm sure everyone would love that. Um, if anyone does have any more questions at this time, please feel free to um, just go ahead and ask them. You can unmute yourself. If you're not able to, you can raise your hand and I'll make sure you get unmuted um, or you can put your question in the chat. So we'll just give you um, another minute or so to do that. But Chris, um, if anyone is like, wow, skulls are so cool, and they didn't realize that they loved them so much, and now they want to go ahead and learn about skulls. Here's, here's something that's them. interesting. Yeah. All right. I also am an expert in birds. Well, birds did not evolve complex jaws. Mammals did. Birds did not involve them because they're too heavy. Birds are designed to, for lightness so they can fly. So their jaws are quite simple. In fact, they have no teeth. They have a gizzard instead. But Birds evolved beaks. All the birds have different beaks. And it's all driven by, you guessed it, dietary preference. Thanks, Chris. That that makes sense. And I think 
I think we don't have any more questions, but um, can you just share what that really cool book was that you had shown at the beginning before we had started in case anyone really wants to learn more about skulls? Right. It's, it's, it's impressive. The plates are just impressive. It's, uh, Mam can you read it backwards with me? Animal Skulls by Mark Elbrock, E-L-B-R-O-C-H. Animal Skulls by Mark Elbrock. I sent him an I sent him an invite, but I'm, I guarantee you he did not accept. <laughs> I've spoken to him several times, and I taught this uh, to 40 uh, skilled naturalists about three years ago and ordered 40 texts of his texts. That's why I was talking to him, to, to order 40 texts for the class. Wow. Yeah, that seems like a great resource. So um, I, I'm, I'm sure all you guys would learn a lot from that if you wanted to go ahead and, and buy that book. And you did say it was a, a little bit expensive, right? Yeah, it's, I think $40, 37 Okay. It's okay. a little bit uh, right. dear. Great. No, so if anyone doesn't have any more questions, um, I think we will call it an evening. Chris, thank you so much. This was the Thanks first Thanks, everybody. Time I enjoyed it. I had fun doing this. Yes, we learned so much, honestly. By the I way, so my, my day job was 30 years on Wall Street. <laughs> then, I, then I shifted to my second passion, which is this. <laughs> I love that. That just shows follow your passions, you know, <laughs> and you'll be as, as happy as, as Chris here. Yeah, so that's, that's wonderful. I love that. Thank you. And if anyone has any more thoughts after this and they're like, oh, I meant to ask this question, I'm sure that Chris would be happy. Yeah, of to course. That, that, to send him to Tara. Tara send him to me. Perfect. This, this was great. Thank you all so much for joining. Um, and hope to see you again soon. And we'll make sure to send the video recording afterwards and one of Chris's write-ups. Um, so definitely good to see you all. Have a good evening. Thank you so much, Chris. Appreciate it Okay, again. thank you, everybody. Talk to you all soon. Tara, I'm going to send you a new write-up for the history of Earth and for also mammals. I'll send you a new write-up. I, I fixed Perfect. it. I improved it. Great. I'm looking forward to it. Thank okay. you, Chris. Thank you all. Bye. Have a great evening. Bye, everybody. Bye.